So NFL free agency is fast approaching. And I think the question that 49ers fans have on their minds right now is, can San Francisco again afford a splash signing? Every single offseason for many straight years has included either a splash signing or a splash re-signing or both. Last offseason, the 49ers surprised everybody when they brought in Javon Hargrave, the defensive tackle, previously with the Philadelphia Eagles. And then they re-signed Nick Bosa. So obviously the 49ers had money to do both things. And the question is, can they spend a lot of money this offseason, even with that massive Brock Purdy contract looming, potentially in 2025? And one of the premier names out there that I think would fit San Francisco perfectly is Daniil Hunter, coming off a 16 and a half sack season with Minnesota. Hunter, over the 2021 and 2022 seasons, saw a couple serious injuries, and that depressed his value enough by 2023 that he signed only a one year deal with the Vikings. But he absolutely exploded this past season. And that explosion for Daniil Hunter means that he's probably going to make quite a bit of money here in 2024. So can the 49ers fit that into their salary cap equation? Because you look at the 49ers team, and here's a look at their roster and the build your roster tool. You see that they've got Nick Bosa. Obviously, Eric Armstead is there. But Armstead, for the 49ers, he's a defensive tackle. They need that bookending edge rusher for Nick Bosa. And they had Chase Young this past season. I don't think that he was a superstar for them. He was solid in many ways, deficient in some. Drake Jackson is currently coming off of an injury. He had knee surgery. Last I saw him a couple weeks ago, he wasn't anywhere close to 100%. He's still rehabbing. So a bookending edge rusher for Nick Bosa can unlock this 49ers defense and put them into a spot that I think they've only seen once in the first half of that 2019 season. Say that they do sign Hunter. You can select them in the build your roster tool just so you can envision things. I've got $19 million of cap space projected right now. I put Daniil Hunter's name in there. Immediately the 49ers are in the red. Now that, and they still have a lot of players to sign. That does not preclude the 49ers from signing him. They can obviously open up some space with, a Brandon Ayuk extension. They can restructure somebody like Fred Warner's contract and all of a sudden you have money and then you could go about filling other spots. The bottom line is that the 49ers are in a salary cap position that's a whole lot more flexible than somebody like the Buffalo Bills who just had to cut a bunch of players on Wednesday just to fit under the salary cap. The 49ers are already cap compliant. They've done a good job filling in the margins with the draft. They have rewarded a lot of big name players, but they've also restructured contracts in a way that's taken advantage of the rising cap from year to year. Last year's big restructure fest right around the season opener is a great example. They carried over $36 million from 2023 to 2024. So the 49ers have the largest adjusted cap of any team in the NFL this year. The 49ers are at 296.6 million on the salary cap. You'll see it here on the chart. That's higher than anybody in the else in the NFL. So they technically can afford to make a Daniil Hunter splash signing. You see the question on the bottom of the screen? Yes is the answer. The 49ers can afford to sign Daniil Hunter, but it's a matter of risk reward at this point because obviously bringing in another contract this big as you can see through this, is going to cause you to face tough decisions elsewhere. So obviously Chris Jones is somebody who's going to be really expensive, but say Chris Jones came aboard. Well, you'd be in the red by 15 million if you tried to bring Chris Jones and Daniil Hunter. Um, I'll go out on a limb and say that both are not possible. But, you know, even somebody else like Robert Hunt at that right guard position, we've talked about him before, That'd be a $12 million expenditure. This is all estimated based on the salary cap hits. And then you wouldn't have any money to fill out the rest of your roster. So if you're going to go all in on Hunter, you might have to really, really rely on the draft and cost-effective options elsewhere. That being said, Daniil Hunter is an awesome talent. To rack up as many sacks as he did last year, Well, that's obviously saying something, but this is a superb athlete. He is still in his prime. This is a guy who coming out of high school was a high jumper, a long jumper. He ran the 400 meters in 51 seconds. 
It, this, the proliferation of athletic edge rushers, Daniela Hunter embodies it, right? You go and you look at what edge rushers looked like in the early 90s, even in the early 2000s. You had a lot of big lineman types. You've had guys, instead of being signed up to play receiver in high school, now you have guys that are superb athletes, track stars, that have put their hands in the dirt starting in high school and have gotten after the quarterback with that athleticism. It's why defensive linemen have outpaced offensive linemen in this league because the athleticism advantage is just so much greater for the defensive line. So Hunter is obviously great when it comes to explosiveness and his ability to bend around the edge and fight toward the quarterback and pass rushing. But as the 49ers saw this past season on Monday Night Football in Minnesota, he can also play the run really well. He has also got a lot of good inside run moves, which is really important to maintain credibility as a defensive end. Speaking of maintaining credibility, you need that Nick Bosa bookend if you're the 49ers. Maybe it doesn't come through to Neil Hunter. There are other potential options for this football team. We outlined some of them in the roster builder. Brian Burns, obviously, probably off the market at this point after the franchise tag from Carolina. Carolina. But Jonathan Greenard is a possibility. Bringing back Chase Young is a possibility for the 49ers. Zadarius Smith, Jadavian Clowney, Josh Uche, Marcus Davenport, Yannick Ngonkwe, older player. They had Randy Gregory last year. You could go a budget option on top of a star player like Cleveland Farrell, who's coming off the injury. So there are other options. But to me, boy, Daniil Hunter, what an explosive player who was a track star who would absolutely make the 49ers a heavy Super Bowl favorite opposite of Nick Bosa. There already are Super Bowl favorites, but I'd go out and say if you can get Daniil Hunter, superb athlete in his prime, 16 and a half guy, 16 and a half sack guy out there, uh, this would be a massive, massive splash for the 49ers. Don't rule it out. They went last year and they got Javon Hargrave. You know, another thing, one more benefit, the 49ers are in an arms race, not only with the Kansas City Chiefs, and that's the obvious one. They're trying to usurp the Chiefs. They're trying to add impact pieces now that can fortify the core to usurp the Chiefs. But the Detroit Lions are a fast-rising team. The Detroit Lions gave the 49ers all they could handle in that NFC Championship game. The Detroit Lions reportedly were interested in Daniil Hunter back when he was on the trade block. The Vikings never traded him, but the Detroit Lions were very interested. That trade was never consummated, but I think that it stands the reason that the Lions are still interested in signing Daniil Hunter to pair with Aiden Hutchinson. So would you rather have the Lions with Hunter and Hutchinson, or would you have the 49ers with Nick Bosa and Daniil Hunter? I think the answer there is self-explanatory. So that might make it worth it for the 49ers to try to afford a Daniil Hunter splash signing. Don't rule one out because the 49ers have a track record of making these happen. At least roll up your sleeves, brace yourselves, because next week could potentially be very fun.